Welcome to Liberate University. Namaste, dear friends, and welcome to this uplifting devotional chanting meditation to merge in the blissful Samadhi Yoga. So, we're offering this to you with much love in order to celebrate the very auspicious International Day of Yoga, which is on June 21st. So June 21st is now recognized as the International Day of Yoga. And it's very important in the times that we're living to have this awareness of the power and benefit of yoga. So now, Yoga, in its universal sense, is recognized now as this very powerful ancient technique, spiritual technique, really, that ha has come down from the higher ages. So we know that in the higher ages, spiritual consciousness is more predominant. And so all of these ancient rishis and sages from ancient India developed this systematic spiritual technique, which is yoga. So now we have to understand that yoga, as we know it today, is very ancient, but at the same time is very complete now. Most people think of yoga as the uh, physical postures, right? So when people talk about yoga, think of yoga, most people, um, you know, think of it as the branch which is actually known as Hatha Yoga. Now, this is only a very small part of the whole complete science of yoga. Yoga, in its complete sense, actually goes very deep, much deeper than just the physical postures. And actually, it was Paramahansa Yoganandaji who came from his native India to the West and who is now revered as the father of yoga in the West. He's the one who came to explain and teach the completeness of yoga, okay? So Yoganandaji explains that yoga in its universal sense means union of the spirit with the divine or union of soul with spirit. This is actually the meaning of yoga. Yoga literally means union, okay? So he's the one who came to explain that yoga is much more deeper than just the physical postures. Yoga is actually a path, a very powerful path that can lead the soul back to spirit or to the divine. And so Yoganandaji, with all of his wisdom and with all of his love, transmitted this ancient science which came from Mahavatar Babaji, from the ancient Himalayan mountains, who then came in a way of a lineage. Babaji then initiated Lahiri Mahashai in the Himalayas. Lahiri Mahashai then initiated Swami Sri Yukteswarji 
and Swami Sri Yukteswar Ji then initiated Paramahansa Yogananda Ji and asked him to fulfill this great, great important dispensation, which was to bring the ancient science of yoga to the West. And so specifically, the science, the technique, the spiritual science of yoga that he brought is Kriya Yoga. So with this, we have to understand that yoga has many different branches. As we know, we have Hatha Yoga, which are the physical postures, but there are several different types of branches. We also have Jnana Yoga, which is the path of wisdom. We have Karma Yoga, the path of selfless service or selfless activity. We have Bhakti Yoga, which is the path of love and devotion. And so as we see, we have many different types and branches of yoga. Now, this, the most powerful, most highest and ultimate uh, path of yoga or branch of yoga is Raja Yoga. And Raja Yoga is actually the one that encompasses all of the other branches of yoga. And so with this path, Paramahansa Yogananda Ji actually called it Kriya Yoga. So he simplified the complexities uh, inherent in this path of Raja Yoga. And so he simply called it Kriya Yoga. So Kriya Yoga is Raja Yoga. They're one and the same. And with Kriya Yoga, we find that we have this very powerful and simple step-by-step -step technique that is a pranayam technique. And pranayam means the, the power of the life force. So the life force that we use to raise the energy and raise the consciousness through the seven chakras or centers of consciousness we raise it up through the, through the pranayam technique, technique of Kriya Yoga, and then we merge into spirit by going out through the spiritual eye and through the centers of spiritual perception in the brain. So uh, this is very powerful. And actually, Sage Patanjali, which was the foremost exponent of yoga, so he was an ancient sage, a Hindu sage, who wrote the treatise he called the Yoga Sutras. And uh, Yogananda Ji, when he established um, his organization, Self-Realization Fellowship, he translated the commentaries of Patanjali, which are based in the Yoga Sutras. And he uh, translated these verses very powerfully and in a very simple way, in simple terms, that, so that we can understand, okay? So with Patanjali, we have the very definition of what yoga is in its universal sense. He opens his Yoga Sutras with a verse that says, Yoga Chitta Vritti Niroda. So Yoga Chitta Vritti Niroda, Yoganandaji translated as yoga is the neutralization of the restlessness of the wave of thoughts, basically. So here we have in this sloka, in the first loka of the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali, we have the very definition of what yoga is. Yoga is this spiritual, powerful method that neutralizes the restless mind, calms the mind through the life force, which then allows us to enter into the deeper states of meditation and awareness, which then takes us back to the divine. So as we see, it's actually a scientific method. It's very scientific um, and it's very, very powerful. So now with the International Day of Yoga, we can think of this very powerful uh, guru, which is Paramahansa Yogananda and how he came to explain the nature and the essence of what yoga is. Okay, so uh, I want to explain a little bit more about what Patanjali uh, brought, what Patanjali developed um, in his Yoga Sutras. So in the Yoga Sutras, as Yoganandaji explained, 
um, we have the Eightfold Path of Yoga. So Patanjali was the great sage and Rishi of India who outlined the Raja Yoga system of Hindu philosophy as the Eightfold Path. And so the first two paths are Yama and Yama, which are the do's and don'ts of moral conduct, which are the basic principles of every religion. The next step is Asana, which is correct meditation posture. The next step is Pranayam, which is conscious control of the life force or Prana. The next step is Pratyahara, which is interiorization of the mind, resulting from shutting off the senses from the life force or prana. The next step is dharana, which is super concentration on any metaphysical concept of spirit or truth. The next step is dhyana, which is meditation and expansion of consciousness on the cosmic perception of om. And finally, the last step is samadhi, which is super conscious perception. So becoming one with spirit in the ecstasy of super consciousness. So now with Samadhi, there are different degrees of Samadhi as well. But the two highest um, states of Samadhi are Sabhikalpa Samadhi and Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Uh, Sabhikalpa Samadhi is basically merging with the ocean of spirit in a trance-like state with bodily fixation. Nirvikalpa Samadhi is melting in the ocean of spirit without bodily fixation and without loss of God consciousness. So this is the highest and ultimate state of oneness with spirit. So this is when we finally merge as waves of the sea, becoming one with the ocean of spirit, with the ocean of bliss. So this is Nirvikalpa Samadhi. And now... It is very powerful that we're going to use this session to think of ourselves merging in this ocean of bliss, this ocean of spirit, this ocean of nirvikalpa samadhi. Okay? So, what we're going to do, we're going to get on our right meditation posture, then we're going to relax ourselves, do a little pranayam exercise, a very simple one. Then we're going to have opening pray prayer and we'll get into our chanting session, okay? And in our chanting session, we're going to do a Patanjali mantra to get into the vibration of this great sage and rishi of India who developed this powerful spiritual method. And then we're going to chant a cosmic chant by Paramahansa Yoganandaji, which evokes this spirit of attaining Samadhi, okay? It's called In Samadhi, okay? So, it's gonna be a very powerful session and we hope that you feel very uplifted, very powerfully uplifted and so that, you know, with this awareness raised vibration, we can tune in to that devotional and spiritual energy of Samadhi. We can all attain this powerful state, you know? It's not out of our reach, you know? Many times the mind can trick us and, you know, make us think that we're not worthy, you know? That we have all these flaws, all these imperfections, but no. We have to remember, we're made in the perfect image of spirit, and as such, we are already one with spirit, really. We are already one with that inner joy, that inner bliss, okay? So samadhi is not out of our reach. We just have to become aware that we're already swimming in the ocean of bliss, in the ocean of spirit, okay? So now, let us get into our right meditation posture. So this is the third step in the Eightfold Path of Yoga called Asana. Very simple meditation posture, which Yoganandaji teaches is just spine straight. 
shoulders back, chest out, abdomen in, palms upturned, resting on the thighs, close to the abdomen. And the gaze of the eyes gently uplifted at the spiritual eye, which is the point between the eyebrows, also known in Sanskrit as the Kutasta Chaitanya. This is the center of spiritual perception in the body. Okay, so this is asana, correct meditation posture. Now let us practice a very simple pranayam exercise to calm the body, calm the mind, calm the senses. We'll inhale deeply through the nostrils, then hold the breath for a few seconds, and then exhale deeply through the mouth. And we'll repeat that about three times before our opening prayer. So let us inhale deeply. Hold. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Let us now fold our hands. Pray deeply with devotion from our hearts. Invoking the Lord in his personal aspects of Father, Mother, Friend, Beloved God. Let's pray together, Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, great gurus of self-realization, saints of all religions, we bow to you all. Beloved Spirit, open wide the bud of my devotion and release its fragrance that it may spread from my soul to the souls of all others ever whispering of thee. Om. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti.
So now, as we chanted with devotion, let us remain in the right asana, correct meditation posture, and hear what we do. We now practice pratyahara which is called stillness or interiorization of the mind. So we just keep the gaze gently uplifted and focused at the spiritual eye, point between the eyebrows. And we just stay there in deep stillness, in deep peace. We try not to even think of anything we don't even have to think about anything. You can, you know, keep all, th all thoughts out of the mind. And so this is called Pratyahara. In stillness, we behold our true essence, our true nature, which is the soul. So let us practice this briefly now, together.
And now, after we've become still through pratyahara, or stillness of the consciousness, now we can merge in the higher steps. So now that we've practiced pratyahara or stillness, now we can try to merge in the higher states of dharana, super concentration, dhyana, expansion of the consciousness, and samadhi, oneness with spirit. And we do this through devotion. Devotion, love for God, love for the divine, is actually what takes us back to spirit. Because we have to remember that love, divine love, is the essence, the source of all that is. And we can merge in Samadhi through devotion. It's actually the way to merge in divine love is to merge in Samadhi. So let us now together practice devotion. You can simply talk to spirit in the language of your heart. You can use a simple affirmation such as reveal thyself, reveal thyself, or I love thee, Lord, I love thee, Lord. So let us practice this together briefly. Let us close our session by chanting OM, great universal cosmic sound of OM. Feel our consciousness expanding with OM. And at the same time, visualizing all beings whole world and the full universe enveloped in the healing light, the healing love of Om.
Let us now close with a prayer from our hearts. Heavenly Father, Divine Mother, Friend, Beloved God, Great Gurus of Self-Realization, All Saints, we bow to you all. Beloved Spirit, may thy love shine forever on the sanctuary of our devotion and may we be able to awaken thy love in all hearts. Om Shanti 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 Thank you so much, beautiful souls, blessed friends, for having joined in this sacred, uplifting time together. And may you always carry in your heart the love of spirit, the love of the divine, and spread that love to all who cross your path. God bless you always. Namaste. Thank you for being a part of this class. We hope to see you at the next one.